I'm Dr. Willow Brown, your Taoist expert at Sex Reimagined. And I'm Leah. And guess who I am? Your Tantra expert here <laughs> at SXR. We love to bridge together Taoism and Tantra because they are two sides of the same coin when it comes to sacred sexuality. But today we interviewed two incredible people, a married couple who they've been married for 45 years, y'all. I mean, that just doesn't happen that much these days, but Dr. Yeah. Glenn and Phyllis Hill, and they spent the first 30 years of their marriage in a lot of pain, a lot of conflict, and really bad sex life. <laughs> and now they are in their 60s. They are having the best intimacy of their life, the best sex of their life, and they have a method for you that will get you out of trigger fest with your partner and into connection. It's called the Connection Codes, and you're going to hear all about it in this episode. And I have to say, like, they needed this intervention so desperately in their relationship. It took them 25 years of unhappiness, starting with their freaking wedding night. You're going to hear all about it. And it's going to be so easy to apply what they're teaching to your own life. So you know what to do, baby. Tune in, turn on, and fall in love with Dr. Glenn and Phyllis Hill. Welcome to the Sex Reimagined Podcast where sex is shame-free and pleasure forward. Let's get into the show. All right, we are here with a Dr. Glenn and Phyllis Hill, and we're so excited to learn about this incredible thing that you guys offer the world, the connection codes, and how you've helped thousands of couples come back to love and your own personal journey with this work. I'm so curious about that. Um, so welcome, both of you. We're so happy to have you. You know, wow. Thank well, you. thank you guys. And, uh, you know, we've really always loved diving into the content that y'all put out there before we are guests. And uh, that has been really incredible for us just to see uh, just the ways that y'all explore mm. as far as people connecting and just the topic of marriage and how we're searching to be able to be more connected. And of course, our story we thought we had it all, mm. you know, on paper. We sure looked good when we went into marriage. And we thought that that alone would give us kind of a free pass and that we would have a great beginning. And that it was just like the opposite. And it took us so many years to undo the damage that we did really right away. Mm. And wow. just that pain and that disconnection that happened. And I think we, and we suffered in silence a lot at the beginning because we were so kind of shocked, didn't know who to talk to. Uh, and it, it just didn't make sense to us because we thought we had done all the right steps and it prepared, you know, so well mm -hmm. and had so many things going for us that it just didn't make any sense. And I, you know, Glenn is the researcher always has been reads like books, like crazy and reads all the research papers. Yes, like that's what he does yes. instead of watching Netflix at night. <laughs> exactly. Where I'm into my novels. Right. And that's like me and, and Leah. Oh, so, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, yes. The novel girl. And oh, yeah. Oh, boy, boy, watch out. No. <laughs> smutty, smutty novel. She's a smart whore. There you go. <laughs> so, you know, I just, Glenn was always searching for the answers and to figure out it just didn't make any sense. And, you know, people often ask us, like, why did y'all not give up? Like, mm -hmm. it just, and for us, it was like, well, that didn't seem like the answer either. And mm -hmm. we had children right, you know, early, right away. And so it was like, man, you know, kind of the, the idea of separating and then doing the single parent thing. For us, that just, it's like, that can't be the way that this has to play out. So there's got to be better answers. Yeah. And the problem is that 24 hours before our wedding, we were excited about mm. happening ever after. Just like every wedding I've ever been to. I've never been to a wedding where the vows are, you know, we'll be madly in love for six months, maybe two <laughs> years. And then right. we'll paid into some level of blondness. I've never heard those uh, wedding vows. So everybody thinks they are, you know, mm. that they found the one, you know, it's going to be amazing, love of a lifetime. And we were wrecked immediately. Our wedding night was a disaster, um, mostly thanks to me, not on purpose. I just didn't know. I was completely uneducated, unknowledgeable. And that set us up only for about a quarter of a century. Uh, oh, wrong. yeah. Oh, thank you, Leah, for letting That's me. Not too long. Not too much. M many yeah. couples go much, much longer than that. So. Oh, Lord, now, Lord. how long were you guys together before you got married? Four years. Four years. Okay. okay. Now, did that get those four years? Did those give you some insight to what was to come when in those first couple of years? Of well, 
Probably not because we were long distance a good bit of that time okay. and just really, yeah, not, uh, yeah, I think clueless is probably. Yeah, and I just can't believe that 48 hours after our wedding, we were just lost mm. from wow. each other. Of course, at that point, did not know that, oh, well, this is going to be for two, two or three decades. Wow. Uh, why we didn't know, because that would have been pretty overwhelming. Um, so I was just completely perplexed and befuddled and bewildered. It's like, wait, this cannot be. I adore this person. She adores me. We want to be together. How in the heck can we lose each other, miss each other? And actually, Phil, a little less than a quarter of a century, Phyllis said to me, I was a contractor then, uh, a builder, and she said, babe, as hard as you work, we should be rich, and we're not rich, so we have to do something different. And she made me quit working, go back to school, and oh. that was a big level up as far as, you know, finding uh, what's happening initially just with us. We didn't care about mm -hmm. anybody else. We're just like, well, yeah. what is happening like, We got to fix us? ourselves here right. before we fix yeah. the rest and of the world. Now we realize that this is, the connection codes are based on the human condition. Uh, mm. This is true for every human on the planet, cross-cultural, cross-language. And we've been thrilled and stunned by that. But again, initially we were just like, we have to figure something out here. This, everything that we tried wasn't working. And then mm -hmm. we'd go to marriage seminars. I'd read a book. Uh, and there'd be a little something, but we never really figured out, you know, you know, what was the cause of the disconnect. Well, and for us, I mean, our story, which is, you know, out there for sure, uh, we've been pretty public about it, mm -hmm. is that we thought the only issue was sex for us. And mm -hmm. so we worked really hard on making that really great. And then we realized, but there's still something missing. There's, mm -hmm. there's not an emotional connection. There's, there was such a miss with that. And we um, a, probably a major event in our lives, which at the time we didn't know it was going to be so major, is what we call the dishwasher story. And at this point, how long have we been married? At least 20 years. 20 plus, yeah. And if we, we would, had known that we were going to be doing what we do now, we would have written all these things yeah, on the calendars. Like, absolutely. Okay, the dishwasher story. Here it is, <laughs> August the 3rd. You know, yeah, that was a big no. day. But we would have these interactions where... Uh, and this is one of those, you know, I came into the kitchen preparing for dinner, thinking I needed to unload the dishwasher. I open it. Well, it was already empty. So Glenn comes into the kitchen and I said, hey, babe, thanks for unloading the dishwasher. And his response was, well, it's not like the only thing I've done today. Which is uh, typically how I would respond. So yeah, that was like a typical that. response. And I would either roll my eyes uh, mm -hmm. or I would just go, oh, good grief or Sometimes I would say, you know, you could just say you're welcome. Mm -hmm. But that was our pattern. Like mm -hmm. that played out over and over for us. And that particular day, I decided or I became curious. Mm -hmm. And my curiosity led me to say, what do you hear me say when I say thank you for unloading the dishwasher? Because mm -hmm. I realize that this has happened thousands of times, uh, mm -hmm. very, very similar uh, yeah. interactions. And what we had missed was that Phyllis is one of the most productive people on the planet. Uh, she's perpetual motion and I'm not, I'm fun to have around, but I do struggle getting <laughs> yeah. things done. So when she would say, thanks for loading the dishwasher or whatever it was, whatever task it was, I thought she was making fun of me. I thought uh -huh. that she was going, oh my gosh, miracle. Glenn, like some saying it sarcastically, yeah. like, thanks uh, a lot. <laughs> I knew how much I struggled getting tasks done. Things done. Uh, and again, this has nothing to do with Phyllis. This didn't even exist in Phyllis's universe, but mm -hmm. that's what I experienced with her. And she slowed down. She goes, man, what happens for you there? W what do you hear me say? Mm. And I told her Brilliant. and that's uh, something we'll talk about in a minute called the ooh. She ooed me for the first time in our relationship. And she went, Oh, mm -hmm. no wonder you respond the way you respond because mm -hmm. I just insulted you. I just uh -huh. made fun of you. I just demeaned you. Of course, you're not going to say you're welcome. I mean, when somebody right. insults you profusely and you go, you're welcome, that doesn't make any sense. And she had completely missed that. And I had missed it. I had no idea. I mean, because my experience was real. Yeah. I knew that she was making fun of me. I knew that she was doing this just to be a jerk, Correct. which again, not true at all. It had nothing mm -hmm. to do with Phyllis. Right. Uh, as a matter of what was happening inside of Glenn. That was a huge benchmark in our relationship. Big, big turning uh, point. Yeah, us. it really points to um, how our insecurities are sort of how we see the world seeing us. You know, like I just had one come up recently where it's like I'm not being seen. You know, it's like I'm totally being seen. That's my own insecurity. You know, so it, and then I could color the world with that lens if I wanted to. 
or take a breath and change my perspective. So that curiosity mm-hmm. that Older. you dropped into, I mean, that's the name of the game right there. Yeah. 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 How did that, how did that inflection point, right? The dishwasher story, that being an inflection point, how did that change how you responded to each other mm-hmm. from that day forward? I imagine that was such an aha moment that things mm-hmm. shifted. Yeah, Absolutely. they really did. And yeah. for me, it, it was like I saw him in a, in a different light and it made so much sense. It, it was like two decades of missing each other all of a sudden was so clear, like, oh, wow. you know, I am genuinely thanking him for helping, uh, you know, with Contributing, something. yeah. Yeah, yeah. And I never, like, even in sharing the story with you guys, you know, he says, I'm the most, what What do you call me? Like, I get so much stuff done. Yeah, one of the and, most productive yeah, people. Yeah, and, and I don't view myself that they're, way. They're not productive Olympics. If there were, she would have, <laughs> she'd medal. She I don't know. She'd have gold medalist. Right, right. Well, you know, I, I don't know, like I didn't view myself that way. I was just doing whatever I needed to do. You. you know, yeah. I was just doing the, the thing that was in front of me. So he viewed me as like the giant, the Olympic star of production. And I'm just going, well, you got to feed the kids and then you got to do the dishes or it gets gross. Like I didn't view it as in this is a really big deal where for him, things are more challenging um, tasks are more challenging. And so I thought that for so, all the years we were fighting over logistics, mm. like logistical things, or I, in in that moment, I realized it's not about the logistics. It's about what's happening for that person. Like what's happening for Glenn, when I say thank you, it's as though I stabbed him with a ice pick. And mm. it's so painful for him when I say that, because of his own internals. And so after that moment, first of all, it was a super bonding moment because that in previous had always turned into either a fight or at least silence for a while. Right, a shutdown. Yeah. And so in that moment, because of my curiosity and then his response, and I saw it, like I, I didn't try to logistic him out of it. I didn't try to explain to him that that's ridiculous that he hears that or experiences that. I just sat with him in it. Like I heard him, I moved towards him physically. Like Mm -hmm. I touched him, I, I was hearing his words genuinely. And so then after that moment, whenever we had interactions that for me didn't make sense in my brain, I would go, okay, just get curious, ask him what's happening for him. And then I began to hear the way he experienced life, which was super different than the way I experienced life. And it changed for us so radically because my response to him was, in a sense, I will just hear you. I'm not going to try to talk you out of what you're experiencing. I just I'm going to make space and hear you. Yeah, which the trick is, and, and from a completely good intention, great heart, Phyllis had been trying to out logistically for me for years. Uh, you know, I would say, you know, well, it's not like I was the first thing I've done today. She'd be like, I didn't, I didn't say it was. I, and, well, I don't know why you have to make such a big deal out of it. You know, you act like it's amazing, you know, like some big, big accomplishment. And she's like, I, I, what? I didn't say any of that. I said, thanks for loading the dishwasher. And right. what she was experiencing and what I was experiencing in the exact same setting were two very, very uh, different things. And we had no idea about that for many, many uh, years. It was kind of out of exasperation that Phyllis even tried because mm-hmm. she had rolled her eyes and walked out of the room many, many times. We were just like, this is ridiculous. It's so right. absurd. I mm-hmm. say thanks for loading the dishwasher and we're off to the races. How is right. that possible? I said a few words, I think it's six words, a positive, and now we're at war for three right. hours. It's so incongruent with where you both know your heart is. And I think this must have been so healing. This must Mm. have really been so healing to be able to see each other, see more of each other. Well, it began a completely different journey because the curiosity worked in that setting. And so then the next time we had an interaction that I, you know, I thought I would get a very simple response. I, and, and if I didn't from him, I would then go, what's, what do you hear me say? Or I would go, what's happening for you right now? And then to hear what was happening for him was 
just always a, it was like a bridge. I was able to walk across that bridge and join him Mm -hmm. instead of being on the other side of the river with no way to get over to where he was. And so this led to a lot of healing and the emotional side of it changed our connection, which of course, again, I had already mentioned that we always thought that our biggest issue was sex. And then we realized, wow, we're really missing each other emotionally, Mm -hmm. like in a big way, which led Glenn down a very different road um, Mm research-wise and really got him super curious about the emotion side of us and of humans in general, which is, you know, even though his doctorate is in sexology, so sex has always been a big research point. It's like, it's not just about that. There's got to be really good emotional connection to have the best dynamic sexual connection. And yeah. so that is, you know, the, the research and even the connection codes and the book that we've written and all those things come from this kind of discovery that so often couples fight over logistics. Mm-hmm. Like even you hear it, you know, right, the, the, the small space. little fights that yeah. don't make sense. But I mean, yeah, comedians make so many jokes about right. like the tube Sitcoms, of twist- right. Yeah. Yeah, the tube of toothpaste or it's so know, easy just, to just get lost in those tit for tat triggers, you know, yeah. back and forth it becomes a ping pong game and you just go back and forth, back and forth and never really taking that pause. That curiosity is really a pause. Like, let's just hang on. Let's pull back, mm-hmm. get a bigger view of what's going on. And then you can change your perspective because there you are having the same experience. But there's as many experiences as there are people, you know, there's everyone's got their own perspective and everyone's got their own truth. This was a thing in in one of my past relationships where it was like, but that's not the truth. I'm like, well, that's not your truth, but it's my truth. (laughs) You know, so, you know, we really have to pull back to see that. I really love to, for those people who are uh, familiar with the Gottman work, your story illustrates something really beautiful, which is so many times we have that disruption and we turn away. And what you all did in that moment is you turned towards and okay. you decided to get closer instead of to get further. And I think that's such a beautiful point in, in looking at sex. You know, this podcast is called Reimagine. We're reimagining sexuality. And so what it does it mean to have the most profound, right. most connected, most pleasurable, most ecstatic lovemaking it comes way before you get into the bedroom it comes right. way before we take off our clothes so what was the next breakthrough that started to contribute to these codes yeah well i just have to say real quickly lee and you're very kind this, this was not a we thing all of the benchmarks <laughs> have been things that phyllis has figured out yeah. I mean, I was way just to go phyllis. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. i always say i'm the educated one she's the smart one you're so right on. <laughs> That's so cute. I love that. And she's the one, literally, she's the one that actually figures out what works and how to apply, how to implement all of this data points, which really are irrelevant. I mean, it's great. I love researching, but the data points are irrelevant if you don't actually do something with those. And she's amazing at that. Cool. Well, it is. It is amazing. Uh, We're such a good mix, right? Mm -hmm. Glenn's willing to do all the research. I don't want to read any of it. And in the tools that we've developed that we now teach, it's kind of like, I always go back, you got to simplify it. That's my word to him mm. always. Like, that is too smart. Bring it down to my level. I'm always telling him that. Like, bring it down. And I want it to be fast. I don't have time. I don't want to read a bunch. I'm like, give it to me in the cliff bridge notes. version. <laughs> yeah. I'm, a, I'm a cliff note girl. Yeah. And unless it's a really good novel, don't give me cliff notes. I want to read them. But, <laughs> When it comes to, you know, self-help, whatever, I want the cliff notes. Give it to me in a, in a, the, the best, easiest way to understand. And I, and I love that about the connection codes is that really that is what we have because we have realized in all the couples that we've worked with that most people want to see results quickly and they want this tools that makes such a difference. And, One, the, and they need to. They need to. Because yes, they're in pain. Yes. Yeah. One of the things we learned during that season for us, Glenn was always the why guy. He mm-hmm. would come at everything about us with a why. Like, why did you say that? Why do you think that? And I would just 
freeze. Like I hated the why question. For one thing, I knew I would always get it wrong. I would not answer correctly. And where for him, he was genuinely trying to understand. It's kind of that research mind. Well, we, through this, we understood and did a lot of research about how humans respond to the question, why? It's like we feel uh, an attack when someone says, you know, why? Uh, and so we've changed that. This is one of our tools is instead of saying why, to say what happens. And it, it's so interesting to see in that, you know, the difference, like what happens is an invitation. It invites you uh, to slow down and figure out, yeah, what is happening for me? And from the other person, it's an invitation. Like, I really want to know. I really want to understand what's happening with you. Why seems like an accusation, like you've done something wrong and you need to explain yourself. Mm -hmm. So that's one of the that's tools that we distinction. Mm -hmm. That's bad. Yeah. Well, Can and, you give us an overview of the connection code? So this is one piece of it, right? Right. Yeah. 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 And it's, it's tools like that. Um, I would say that if people, it's a guide, it's a, it, you know, that's how we kind of describe it. It's a guide for how to connect deeply with humans, whether you're married or not married, we're always trying to connect deeply with people. The tools are super practical, just like that one, why versus what happens to mm -hmm. see the change in how people respond to us yeah. when we say, uh, you know, just take that out. We always tell people, just try it for a month. Take out the word why and put the words what happens into that, which is such an, a simple thing. But then you start seeing, wow, people really respond to me differently when I'm not using that word why. Yeah, so the connection codes, uh, when, when I got my master's in marriage therapy of my private practice, uh, I was startled at how ineffective all these things that I had learned were. And I'd literally spent many, many thousands of hours in school learning this stuff. And then I started researching how effective is Mary's therapy. The vast majority of the population says it's not really. Uh, and uh, a tremendous number of people said it's actually detrimental. It's harmful. And of course, it's all over the board as far as how people's uh, perspectives. So I just started basically with a blank sheet of paper and I said, okay, I give up. I'm just going to observe. And we spent two and a half years just observing interactions and notating Okay, it doesn't matter who is partner. Initially, I was looking at marriage, but it can be mother, daughter, cousins, coworkers, whatever. Any intimate relationships, what? yeah. What? Yeah. Well, any interaction. Well, any, Close. Yeah, because we all Close want to be relationships. seen and we all want to be understood. Yeah. I mean, those are basic mm -hmm. biological right. impulses, Acknowledged, and desires. Yeah. So again, we just start data pointing it. Oh, we have three categories: disconnect, neutral, and connect. And just noticing, and it just became organic. We started noticing, okay, every time Willow asks Leah, Leah, why do you do it like that? Why do you do that? Leah moves away from Willow, either geographically or relationally. And so we just start notating that. We didn't start out really with a, uh, an agenda as far as the, the, the language. We just wanted to know what is working. And then we, for the next two and a half years after that, we started feeding people and I would say in that situation, hey, Willow, can you just find out what happens for her? And Willow would go, what do you mean? I'm like, just ask her. Hey, Leah, what happens for you in that situation? And then we started noticing that no one disconnected. And we don't say never or always with human research, uh, but with human behavior. But that's what we noticed. They, ne they didn't always connect. So there were plenty of neutrals, but they never disconnected. And so we're like, ding, 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 we have a winner. Uh, and so we just went through and started noticing when people disconnect. Uh, and I was excited about that. And I remember the day I came home and I said, babe, I think I found it. I think I found what causes people to disconnect. And again, me, the educated one, she, the smart one, she goes, well, that's fine. But what causes people to connect? I'm like, I don't know. Who cares about that? We figured out all the disasters in life. And she's like, well, that's not really our objective. We actually would try to help, like, to, you know, help people connect. And then she said, wait, what if we reverse all of these things that cause disconnect? Is that what would cause people to connect? And she was right. She always says, really? oh, okay, we can reverse these disconnects and make them uh, connectors. And that's what's now called the connection code. Let me back up a little further, because part of the whole thing, too, is that most of us, maybe most is not the right word. Many people don't know how to connect to themselves. They Appreciate don't know that. what's happening. Yeah for themselves. Ding, ding, ding. So we, you know, we talk, we say, a, a, you know, right now, like take why out and put in what happens. Well, I, many times people go, 
I don't know what happens to me, like for me, like they don't know the wording. So a lot of the research went into just what's going on in the brain. Mm -hmm. And I know for me, I, you know, I'm still, I think to this day, I'm in my sixties. I'm like, how did I not learn all of this Mm -hmm. early in life? Like, I didn't know that your brain houses emotion. So I'm just like, no, no, no. I used to very confidently say, oh, I don't do emotion. Glenn has enough emotion for both of us. We're good. (laughs) And I took a lot of pride in that. Like, I don't do emotion. I do work. Tasks was my thing, which, you know, I thought I could opt out of emotion. And then when (laughs) I finally got to a place in life where my body started rejecting my crazy lifestyle, then I had to slow down enough to go, okay, now what, what is emotion? And Glenn was doing all this research, which again, you know, my thing to him was, I don't, I'm not going to do the research. I'm not going to read the book. So make it as simple as possible for me. At that time, I was running a company and I had too many irons in the fire. Like, I'm like, I'm, I can't slow down and I don't want to read the books that you're reading. And so when he started teaching me about emotion, it, it was life changing. Like to find out my brain houses emotion I am experiencing these core emotions, which, you know, there's a lot of talk about emotion out there, but often it is complicated. It's like we have a a list of 150 and then to go, wait, there's only five regions of the brain that house emotion. Let's keep it more simple. Like, let's talk about the five and don't give me a list of 150. And so that's part of our research and that's part of what we teach now is the five regions, which one of the regions, which is the pain region, we actually break into three. So it's a total of eight because the brain, when it fires in the pain region, it looks very different on a brain scan. And so loneliness looks different than sad and hurt. So those are the three. And, you know, part of it is when you start to learn about emotion and then you can tune into yourself, you learn to tune into yourself in a simple way. There's eight of them. It's like, huh, okay, what what is happening for me in the fear region today? And then I slow down enough to go, oh, man, felt some fear before we got on the podcast because we couldn't find the link. Mm. And so it's like, okay, that was my fear region going. And then to even learn how to process, a lot of people say, okay, now you've taught us how to tune in, but what do you do now? Well, process means you say it out loud to yourself, to someone else. You say those emotions and then you, you, you actually can feel them leaving mm. your body. You're yeah, not they have sporty. less charge. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Your nervous yeah. system calms down. Like you're, you're not as dysregulated. Right. And so all of these simple things is part of Glenn's research. He was using it with his, in his private practice. And then he's bringing it home and sharing it with me. And I kept saying, simplify it, simplify it. Got to get it shorter. Yeah, one of the things that, um, and a whole bunch of things were happening at the same time, but what I began observing was, and we eventually called it the court case, that these couples, these relationships, these people, interactions, whatever, were trying to win the court case. Mm-hmm. So I'm trying to show that actually, and, you know, Willow, you mentioned uh, proving the truth, and that's mm-hmm. what everybody did. And they're trying to find the truth. They're trying to prove the truth value of their perspective. And after observing, again, literally thousands of interactions, I'm like, okay, I've never seen that work. Because even if Willow proves that her point is correct and Leah's is wrong, they still didn't connect. Yeah, it doesn't matter. It doesn't make us closer. It might drive us further apart, right? Right. And that's what we started saying is that, okay, congratulations, Dr. Willow. You won the court case. You lost the relationship. Leah doesn't want to be anywhere near you anymore. She did win the court case, so let's celebrate, you know, pop a cork, we'll have <laughs> right. some petty. It doesn't work. And so then we're, again, had begun researching emotion already and thinking, wait a minute, it's emotions mm-hmm. that connect humans. It's not logistics. Logistics are not irrelevant. They do exist. They do matter, but that's not what happens in the relationship. So then I began studying emotion like crazy, learning we have five neural regions. That's just the human condition. That's true for everybody on the planet. Uh, or hurt, sad, and lonely look so different on the brain scan that we actually divide those two. That's really divide- interesting. Yeah. Well, is that in the limbic system or in the um, 
Yeah. And the limbic system is the central command center for emotions, emotions. across the body, yeah. but the limbic system is the central command center. Everything processes through that. Uh, other than hurt, it can process through the spinal cord, but that's oh, a boring detail. Um, I can't wait to read your guys' book. <laughs> <laughs> that's not even mentioned because that's such you know academic stuff. Who cares? Oh yeah, but we care. We love that stuff. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> I, I read your so. dissertation. <laughs> I mean, we actually have A fibers and C fibers that uh, conduct pain and hurt and fires through the A fibers, uh, sad and lonely process through the C fibers um, because hurt is so urgent. And if you have your hand on a hot stove, we don't have extra seconds here. Whereas if you're lonely and lonely is just as damaging as any of the core yeah. emotions, if it's up, but lonely is not going to kill you in the next two seconds. Mm -hmm. uh, so, you know, what, what you know, are the other five? So the five regions are anger, fear, uh, disgust, pleasure, and pain. We divide disgust into guilt and shame. We divide pain into hurt, sad, and lonely. So we come up with the eight. Uh, and, and again, that, part of the power of this is that it's the human condition. It's not a personality profile. It's not a theory, not a philosophy. We finally have been able to narrow it down to the human condition. Therefore, and now we know through experience, therefore it applies to every human. It doesn't matter the culture, the language. Uh, the connection mm. goes to spread to over 60 nations now, not because we're good marketers. Uh, it's, it's organic and... <laughs> Trust me in that, <laughs> uh, me especially. Um, but people can't help but share it. Yeah. You know, they experience this, they see a difference, and they share with 10 people in the next two months. Okay, so to kind of recap, my understanding is like you start to tune in to these simple emotions that when you're in the presence of upset, right, or incongruency or something happens and you're, you're dysregulated, right. um, whatever that moment is and you can catch it, then it's bring awareness to one of these eight categories. You tune mm -hmm. in and you start to feel it leave. You start to go, okay, I'm, this is now being kind of released. Then what? Mm -hmm. Well, to understand too that core emotions are different than secondary, tertiary uh, emotions. And we get down to the core emotions because if I walk in the room and I say, Lee, I'm so upset. She doesn't really know what that means. She knows it means something. And I can explain it to her in the next three to five sentences. But she doesn't know what upset means. If I walk in the room and I say to Leah, Leah, I'm feeling fear. Every human on the planet knows what fear is. And what the research shows was if I say that to Leah, it actually tickles the fear region of her brain. Mm -hmm. And it becomes a shared human experience. And we bond through that. And I haven't even told Leah what the fear is about yet. But she's already right. tuned into you. If I say I'm upset, I'm overwhelmed, I'm stressed. But you're not wrong. I mean, those are true words. We but Leah doesn't really connect have... to each other now. Right. And is yeah. it because of the mirror neurons? Like when you watch a commercial and you get all teary because they're all teary and yeah. it's that empathy exactly. thing that gets yeah. uh, lined yeah, up. You've seen a video of someone, you know, this, it's a horrible thing, but it's one of my favorites. Somebody <laughs> saying goodbye to somebody on a train and they're running down the platform and then they <laughs> slam. <laughs> oh, oh, yes. And you feel it in your I body. That. That's not possible. <laughs> How can you feel it in your body? Did, this isn't your friend. You don't even know who this is. This is a video in a movie. Either. I mean, it's not even real, whole, but we feel your it. Your whole body just reacted in pain yeah. mm -hmm. because we are coded for yeah. that. That's hardwired. Leah's not trying to be a sweetheart and feel the pain of the other person. She can't help it. She's like, Ugh. you know, mm -hmm. we, we've shown people um, just pictures of cuts, you know, on a hand and literally the pain region of their brain activates. That's not possible. You don't even know whose hand that is. Right. You don't know how they got. Well, it's just a human code. Cool. That's it's what happens. Yeah. yeah, it's fascinating. Okay, so let's, I want to circle back to um, how do we flip the script, so to speak? Like, how do we go from like this, this was a disconnect to turning it into a Yeah, so I get like we start to feel empathy, right? It's like, okay, yeah. I get you. I'm getting some more information of what you're feeling. So uh, the, I, uh, well, I want to mention it now because I don't want us to run out of time, but we want to show, we want to do this uh, for you guys and your audience. Uh, we call it the core emotion wheel. And, it, you know, we also talk about a four minute tool to conquer conflict. And the, it is, it's the core emotion wheel that you do uh, with your partner, with your friend, coworker that tunes you in and it brings the empathy out. It also brings the awareness out and it's a connector uh, when you use these eight core emotion words. And well, 
Of course, Glenn's already mentioned it, but what we have found that's so incredible to us that it works in all different languages, mm. all different nationalities, because of the commonness, no matter what language, everyone understands the word fear. Everyone understands the word anger. Yes. Mm -hmm. And so, it, you know, there's such a connector there. And, you know, you kind of go back to the dishwasher story that we shared. What's happening for you now, you know, in, in knowing and understanding emotion, Glenn would say, well, you say what you would say. Uh, when, if I said to you, what's happening for you in the dishwasher story? Yeah, and again, a reference to ooh earlier. The ooh is just an audible response. We know from research that if I'm audible with her, it tickles the pleasure center of her brain. If I'm silent, it tickles the pa pain center of her brain, typically mm -hmm. loneliness. But anyway, when she said that to me today, I just go, oh, wow, that's an ooh. That's two versions of the ooh. Uh, I feel some shame whenever mm -hmm. you say that. And we call it the three phrases. Phyllis would go, oh, what's mm -hmm. happening with shame? What am I missing? Uh, and the third phrase, we don't have time to cover, but third phrase is powerful because she's telling me she's missing it. She's not telling me that I'm an idiot because I haven't explained it better, which doesn't sell for anybody on the planet. Right. Whereas she just says, I think I'm missing something. And she is missing it because I haven't told her. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she's not missing it because she's dumb. She's missing it because I haven't told she her yeah. yet. And she's going to use the three phrases. She's going to go, oh, babe, what's happening? I think I might be missing something. There. And I'm going, well, when you say thanks for loading the dishwasher, I just get hit with shame. I feel less than, I feel stupid, incompetent, unproductive, not like you, the superstar Olympic, uh, you know, gold medalist in productivity. And she's not going to, we call it uh, following the energy. She's mm -hmm. not going to resist my energy. She's not going to go, what? No, babe, you've got strengths on too. You're great. Which the research showed, and that sounds so good. It sounds mm -hmm. like, oh my gosh, she's reassuring him. That's so beautiful. It actually makes mm -hmm. it worse. The research shows that humans don't experience an emotion for more than 19 seconds okay. if it's not reactivated. And reassuring people reactivates oh, the core emotion. Interesting. That's Love so that. interesting. Everybody ding, think, ding. Everyone yeah. get Everybody that? Ding, that ding. Reassurance <laughs> uh, could be taking you in the wrong it is direction. So, it's so worth yeah. repeating because yeah. we think that the person needs to f to hear our words of, no, that's not true. You're well, the best. Right. But actually, it it reactivates. If they have shared like yeah. shame and, and they've said, yeah, I just feel shame in this moment. If you will make space for 19 mm. seconds to sit oh, in boy. that with them mm -hmm. and to be like, oh, yeah. you know, what happens with the shame? I, what you're happens with you're the giving shame. them the platform. Yeah. Like you're saying, yeah. I'm going to listen to what your experience is versus the immediate jump in to go no no you're the best you're so uh, incredible which it's like actually, a spiritual bypass to do that or an emotional bypass you yeah. know and going into the emotion sitting with them in that sort of fire yeah. is yeah. where they can unravel parts of it that mm -hmm. aren't even themselves probably coming from you know upbringing and society and Absolutely. all of that and then yeah. find the morsel that is actually for them and turn it into, I call it medicine. You know, they're, they're, there's medicine in there for you. Yeah. 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 Well, again, what the research showed, we did tons of exit interviews where we watch an interaction for five minutes, 10 minutes, whatever. Then we do an exit interview. We say, so when he reassured you and he told you that, you know, you don't need to feel fear about this. You're okay. You're great. You're going to nail it. You're, you're awesome. What happened for you? And we saw a theme develop again after hundreds of uh, ex interviews where people said, I realized that I was wrong mm. to feel fear and stupid. Mm. So he just said to her from a good heart, and he didn't use those words. He just said, Leah, want to let you know you're wrong and you're mm -hmm. stupid. Ouch. How are we doing now? Right. Are we more connected? And Leah's like, and again, I'm, I can talk fast. So I out talked Leah. And I conveyed to her, I gave her the very clear message, Leah, you're wrong and you're stupid. Leah walked away going, oh, okay, I don't think I'm going to talk to Glenn anymore. I'm not safe being vulnerable with this person. Yeah. Yes. Right. Yeah. yeah. Right. And then I walk away going, hey, Willow, do you see how I nailed that? I mean, I helped Leah so fast. False fast. sense of achievement. <laughs> it's amazing. I fixed Leah so permanently. She mm -hmm. has not experienced that anymore. No, 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 no. She doesn't talk yeah. to me. And so that's different anymore. from hearing what somebody I, said and repeating it back to them. So I hear that you don't, you don't, no, don't prescribe to that. Okay. No. Because it doesn't really matter. If I'm feeling yeah. shame, I'm feeling shame. I just am. Now we're at the core. 
I guess we're just the, getting more and more curious about that. Like, where where is that from? Where do you feel yeah, that in your body? Cool. What does it look like? What does it feel like? Kind of that kind of stuff. Well, and it, it is incredible to think how we, in human interaction, so often we barely miss each other. Mm. Like, you know, I think about the encouragement piece. So many of us were raised to be encouragers, say something kind, say something great. nice. Yeah. Right. We, you know, we're so quick to think we need to give advice. Like when a friend shares that, you know, they may use the word depressed, right? Mm. And we, we want right. to cheer them up. So we, mm. we want to give them a solution. Hey, go for a walk. It will help. And it's not to say that there isn't truth in that, but yeah, so often but people- are missing the key. Yes. And people right. aren't asking for advice. They just want to be heard. They want right. to be seen. seen. Yeah. Yes. They yeah. acknowledge. They want to know that they aren't crazy in a sense. Like to be able to share, for Glenn to share, with the dishwasher story that he felt shame and me to not try to talk that out of him, but to make space for it mm. says to him, I see you, I hear you and I'm mm. safe for you. I'm not going to try to fix you. I'm not going to try to give you the, the antidote. Like I'm going to sit with you. And you know, we have found that in human re interaction, if someone really wants your advice, they're going to word it in a way that clear. it's like, yeah. can you help me? Can you help me buy a car? You're really good at cars and I'm trying mm -hmm. to buy a car. But otherwise, people really aren't asking for advice. We're just quick to give it. And instead of the 19 seconds of I'm going to sit with you in this for 19 seconds, I'm going to hear. I love hurt. that 19 yeah. second piece. That's first new. Time. That's a good nugget for me because it yeah, blew my mind when I first read yeah. the research yeah. on that. Two That's years fascinating. ago. It just came out for the first time. So now we're kind of confident of the efficacy of it. Uh, been yeah, yeah. Um, but it's just stunning. I remember the first time I read it, I told fellas that that's BS. There's no way. Night, shut up. I've watched people in Night. emotions for hours and days. Mm. And then I started researching the research and I'm like, oh, I'll be dead. I'm it takes that much time for it to shift inside of them. Right. Yes. And then it and might several, lead like the shame might lead to another emotion, which might be fear, which might lead, lead to a, another emotion, which could be anger. But it's going to shift every 19 seconds. You can feel it viscerally, too. Yeah. And you can also tell how it just keeps yeah. on re-triggering itself and re-triggering itself, depending on the response yeah. that's yeah. coming towards you. Uh, <laughs> so yeah. if one can just yeah. stay present and quiet, even. And just allow mm -hmm. it to be, yeah, you know, have totally some tolerance <laughs> for that emotion to process through someone's nervous system. Wow. Yeah. Well, but what Glenn was saying, silence actually uh, communicates a, a, in the pain mm. region of the person, which is why we teach that you need to be audible. Audible with uh, what we call the ooh, which is simply a, kind of a title for uh -huh, you know you just did the, it uh -huh. yeah yeah yes yes yeah, yes. yeah. yeah. it's right. like right. the nod i'm with you, I'm, with you. you. Worry. Yeah. I'm, I'm right i'm present I'm in this yeah. with you. yeah yeah and, and you're and, literally tickling the pleasure center cool. of our brains when you're right that. right uh, like by. we feel connected to you like you're you're getting this and yeah. and it is interesting the, the still face experiment which was done um in the 70s mm -hmm. It's part of this whole equation, too, which is one of the things we teach in our master class and we reference in our book. It's just that, wow, we often give each other still faces mm -hmm. and we don't even realize it. And it is that silence, you know, and, and it, I mean, in working with couples, you know, often uh, the one will say, well, I just, you, you never hear me. And the other will go, what do you mean? I hear every word you say. All well, 15 times you said right. it, I heard you. And it's like, but if the person doesn't feel heard, that's what matters. Right. Like, Will you tell that to my husband? We have to figure out. <laughs> okay. Is that what you call him? Yeah. Yes. I would love to meet him. Mm -hmm. But, you know, there is so much to that. Like, okay, if I don't feel heard, that's what matters. And so it's then, irrelevant if you were heard. What matters right. is do uh -huh. you feel ding, heard. Ding, ding. And then you exactly. got to get, you got to get under that. Yeah. And it's like, okay, so for you to feel heard by me what do i need to do and often it's that i need you to sit in this with me i need you to be audible so don't just stare at me blankly because i can't stand that because i start making up all kinds of stuff in my head when you're just right. staring at me blankly it's, yeah. but it's but it's but if you are audible like uh-huh and you know even the question so what happens with the shame like if glenn said to me oh shame i would say oh what's happening with the shame 
because I do want to hear the next sentence. I do want to know what Mm -hmm. his experience is. And then for me not to fix him, not to try to encourage him, because that also says I'm listening, Mm -hmm. right? Versus when we jump to the fixing, the person doesn't feel heard. When we jump to giving advice and encouragement, the person doesn't feel heard. It's overriding so it's, their experience. So what would be the yeah. what yes. would be the appropriate response? Um, would be something like, "Thank you for sharing that. It, I can't tell you how much that means to me." No, see, you're so darn smart, Leah. You're way ahead. Um, we're working our way towards okay. what we call the fourth phrase. The first three phrases go together. Oh, what's happening there? What am I missing? Once the emotion is processed, again, I'm not talking an hour and a half. I'm talking about literally Five twenty minutes. seconds. Yeah. Then the fellow should go, so babe, what do you need? And because that's the human uh, experience. We're just looking to meet needs. She says, so what do you need? To which in that situation, I'd be like, nothing. I just needed to process through what was happening for me. Because it's, we can't say to Phyllis, Phyllis, you need to anticipate everything Glenn's going to experience, which is what she did, tried to do for 20 years. It was exhausting. She was always trying to stay 10 feet ahead of me. Because she knew I was going to be reactionary in the next, who knows what, two minutes. Mm -hmm. And we're going to be at war based on who, again, poor. It's like walking on eggshells. Anyone ever had a relationship where they felt like they were walking on eggshells? I'm pretty sure I was the person. They were walking on eggshells around. (laughs) (laughs) Or that, yeah. If I feel hurt by what she said, I'll tell her. Because she, and again, I don't want her to intentionally hurt me, but she's going to hurt me. And probably today. Certainly by today and tomorrow, I will feel wounded at some point by her. And I'll just tell her, I go, oh, mm-hmm. I felt some hurt. Mm-hmm. I did this morning already. Mm-hmm. I, I mentioned something. We processed through it probably in 15 seconds. I love it. Which, this record, blows my freaking mind. If you had said to me it. 30 years ago that this was possible, I probably would have punched you. Yeah. Because I would have thought you are making fun of me. It's like, hey, Glenn, you know, this could take 30 seconds to process through. I'd be like, shut up. Uh-huh. Don't be a smart ass. It does not take 30 seconds. This takes at right. least three days. Yes. We're mesmerized by this. This is the reason we're so passionate about the connection. Because because we're like, oh my gosh. This morning, yeah. we literally processed through something in 15 seconds. And to this day, because we did it poorly for so long, we look at each other like, it is like, Are we that, yeah, that's it. Is that, that it? it? Are, yeah. Time to make dinner. Yeah. And again, that doesn't mean <laughs> that there were it's an afternoon. But we're just going to process it through in the moment, and it blows our mind. What a cool process. It's just high emotional intelligence. Mm -hmm. Okay, so how does this high emotional intelligence and this ability to process within seconds triggers that often are coming from childhood when we get down to the root of them? Um, Great. Yeah, go ahead. I think you're totally correct, except not really. Okay. Because this is actually... A lot of our research, eventually we started researching children. Uh Children do this perfectly. Yeah, they go through it quickly, right? A 12-month-old never struggles being authentic. They're always authentic. And they don't do that because they're so dang smart. They do that because they're coded that way. So somewhere along the way, they're going to get reprogrammed. They're never going to get recoded. So we're just trying to get people to reactivate it back to their original coding. Right. Because when Glenn, this this 12-month-old that had a whole, whole bunch more birthdays, when this 12-month-old is able to be authentic and just tell the girl what's happening with him, they will connect. Not because I'm so dang smart, not because I'm emotionally intelligent, it's because I've relaxed into myself. And my fear, and I get it, Dr. Willow, what you're saying, but my fear is that people are like, okay, well, maybe I can get my master's degree and then I'll be able to do this. No, 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 no. I want people to mm-hmm. relax into themselves. And if I can get Phyllis just to relax into herself and tell me what's authentic mm-hmm. with her, we will connect. Well, and and I would love to do this uh, yeah. for, for your listeners to go through the core mission wheel together. That's, Let's uh, do it. Because do that. I think that a lot of times, if we don't know how to connect mm. with ourselves, if right. we don't know what's happening for ourselves, we're not able to communicate it to the other. And so it mm. starts with that. And people often go, oh, I don't, I do not, mm. I don't know what that feels like in my body. I get that. That was me. Like, because I had pushed away emotion my whole entire life. Mm. So when all of a sudden I I realized this was my problem, my body was shutting down. As we know, the body keeps the score. I was like, oh, wow, now I have to take a crash course in this. So give me the cliff notes. And I've got to have something that I can do quickly on a daily basis to connect with myself so that, number one, I am healthy but I also then want to connect with you 
and I want to be able to do this. And so that's what we call just the the core motion wheel mm -hmm. that we've created. And for your listeners, we do have a uh, a way if they go to connectioncodes.co forward slash sex reimagined, we've put together a page just for you guys where you can uh, get a free download of this core motion wheel. You can get the instructions on how to use it and a video of us awesome. doing it so that you can Thank begin. you. Uh, I just want to point out that's yeah. not yeah. Dot .com, it's dot .co, C-O, and we'll have the link oh, in the show yes. notes. Yep. Yes. Connectioncodes.com is a computer software or something. <laughs> yeah, don't okay. go there. No, okay, okay show us the you. wheel. Show us the wheel. Okay. Well, uh, so the wheel, the one that we are showing uh, right now is actually created with emojis and kids love this one. So we have different styles, but this is the one that is the most fun um, as far as emojis go. And it just lists the eight emotions. So we're going to do this and uh, bear with us. How about that? Yeah. And again, the rules are on. It's very important that people do this according to the rules, because if you use it according to the rules, it's a tool. If you don't, it becomes a weapon. You're going to go first? Or? Yeah, that'd be great. Let's see. For me uh, this morning, I felt a little bit of hurt. Mm -hmm. Just our brief interaction. Yeah. And it was amazing just mm -hmm. how you're able to be present and safe mm -hmm. uh, for me. It's so much joy in that. And it makes the, the pain experience actually a benefit mm -hmm. wow. because we're more bonded uh, through it. Uh, I feel a lot of fear just in any of these interviews that we convey clearly that people mm -hmm. understand what's happening, what we're trying to present, mm -hmm. uh, because yeah. these are very, very charged uh, issues and people mm -hmm. can get wounded uh, very, very uh, easily. Mm. Uh, I feel anger about that. There's so much information out there that's just detrimental. Mm. You know, the group I met with yesterday um, it just drove me nuts. The stuff mm -hmm. that they're presenting, these horrible ideas that from a totally good heart they think are wow. uh, great ideas. I feel some shame that I'm not better at marketing and presenting. Mm -hmm. And I'm glad we have a team around us that fill in those gaps. But it's just yeah. startling to me how bad I do this stuff. Um, I felt some guilt yesterday. I missed with you i just wasn't really tuned into what was mm. happening with you i got busy which i don't get busy that often but mm -hmm. um i just missed <laughs> with you yeah. uh, and i guess i get a little bit of shame in that too because i've mm. been with you for 45 years you'd think i'd be perfect at it uh now mm -hmm. but i'm not always um a little bit of sadness uh yeah i guess sad and lonely both mm. um we just had a wild crazy night last night I ended up feeling a little bit of loneliness at mm. one point uh and crazy crazy joy because it was a spectacular mm -hmm. encounter with you uh but at one point I felt a little bit of loneliness which i'd already processed with you did i do anger yet i don't remember mm -mm. uh i feel anger Maybe. just <laughs> about getting this message out we've got mm -hmm. to reach eight billion people because mm -hmm. it's the cure for relational cancer and it blows my mind that this is even doable because we've been on this quest for most of our lives trying to figure this thing out did found it wow a lot of joy in that thanks so uh, for me, fear, fear earlier because we didn't know mm. how to find the link. We right. missed on that as far as getting on this podcast. Mm -hmm. So that was definitely my fear region. Uh, felt shame the other day during that photo shoot because mm. I think I always walk into those thinking, oh, my word, you're spending so much money. And is this mm. really going to create good pictures? So I feel shame in those moments. Um, guilt, feel guilt. Definitely yesterday when I missed with you and wasn't tuned in mm. um, when you needed me to be uh, lonely. Uh, let's see. I think some just relationally with some girlfriends right now mm. just feel like we've not been able to connect. And that's when mm. I really experienced the loneliness. Mm -hmm. um, hurt. Uh, well, for me right now, it's a physical hurt. Mm, so yeah. my leg has really been bothering me. So that's, I'm so aware of mm. that. I think a, a lot, um, which I think there's a sad in that all the time, yeah. you know, just that awareness that I deal with pain all the time. Mm. Definitely sad about that at this point in my life. Um, let's see. Anger. Anger is a hard one mm. for me. So the last time I felt that anger, I think um, it was, I think when we were talking about my mom and just how she never had a voice. Yeah. I really do feel a lot of anger about yeah. that. 
that she was such a silent mm. woman in her her marriage and really affected me mm. but yeah anger in that did i get them all uh did you do joy no oh, oh, joy so. um a lot of joy that we're gonna get to go to the beach mm. yes. next so, week i've already or is it that many days we'll be there mm. a week from today we'll already be on the road to the beach. So yeah. I'm super excited about that. Already planning, went shopping yesterday yeah. to get some stuff. A lot of joy. I love it. Yeah. Thank you. Mm. Well, let me clarify real quick, just because I don't know if we made that clear. There's a difference between doing the core motion wheel and the three phrases. You never, 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 never interrupt okay. during the wheel. Got it. Uh, the three phrases are used in real time. You know, this afternoon, whenever Phyllis says, I felt hurt by what you said. Mm -hmm. So we cool. never interrupt. That was really cool. See. Yeah, so you just go around the wheel and you just kind of name uh -huh. each one of the emotions and where you're at yeah. with them. Now, what if someone's yeah. in a deep, deep blow up and fight and they do this? Is this going to bring them closer together? Yep. Well, so what we call that is an issue specific wheel mm -hmm. that in the moment there is something big and to slow each other down and go, hey, can we do the wheel? And it's always an ask because there's times where one is so elevated yeah. and they're so dysregulated that they're just like i need a minute yeah. but when i come down i would like to come back and i would like us to do the wheel over what just happened mm. and then it's like you've got these rules right as we just demonstrated we didn't interrupt each other we didn't ask questions we didn't reassure but we were audible mm -hmm. and so you know i heard what was happening for him i heard you know the hurt and that involved me and I just made space for that. And uh, the importance that people see, and again, that's why we say, make sure you read the rules and you do this yeah. so that it's not a weapon where you're just yelling at each other, you know, through the emotion. You, you aren't doing that. And so, you know, this is what p couples are using. We are, we're having incredible success yeah. with this, which is so amazing. Matter of fact, I had a really incredible phone call this morning with a client who um, they were separated and we were just able to teach them these simple tools and it has changed radically for them. They're back together. Matter of fact, they were sharing with me this morning that they are uh, moving to Hawaii, which is just a huge dream uh, for them. And, and she said, she said, Phyllis, I never dreamed. You guys said this to us that when you start using these tools and showing up for each other, it changes the energy you have to yeah. deal with life. Yep. She said, I can't believe we are both on the same page. We're back together. We're getting our house ready to sell so we can move to Hawaii. She said, this is blowing our minds, but it's because of the connection codes and the tools that y'all have taught us that we are implementing in our lives that now we can hear each other. We can show up like they're still the same people, right? They still see the, the world differently, but now they have the words where they're not wounding each other with their differences, they're just able to show up for each other in their differences. Mm -hmm. And they're hearing, wow, that's how you experience that. And, you know, Glenn and I are just, we're on this journey. We're pilgrims on this journey as well. We use the tools every day and we still see the world so differently. Often I'll express, I'll experience joy in something that Glenn is experiencing pain in, mm -hmm. in that moment. Exact same, yeah, and, exact same situation, yeah. just totally different. And story. yet I can hear him. Right. And it doesn't mean that I have to stop or like, we're not going to do that activity because it creates pain for you. It's or just, try to convert me to joy. Right. Or try to talk him into, you need to enjoy this. But, you know, he'll go, I want to be with you. So I want to enjoy, I want to go with you into that joy experience, but I'm going to process my pain in the, in the experience. And it's like, yes, I'll hear that. You know, it, from a chi perspective. It saves so much chi, like you just said. Now, oh, now this couple God. has so much yeah. energy yes. to be on the yes. same yes. page with each other that That's they can actually amazing. sell their home and move to yeah. Hawaii. Like, what a dream come right. true! And we yeah. we waste yeah. so much energy on emotions. It is insane. Yes. Well, yeah. Yeah. Yes. yeah, and again, not because people are trying to. No, yeah. just don't know what no. to do. So, exactly, if you yeah. want to know what to do and you want to connect with Dr. Glenn and Phyllis, they have a podcast. Uh, called The Connection Codes. Oh, and you can also book a private session with either one of them. And uh, you should enroll in their Foundations Masterclass for Emotional Connection. And we'll have all their information in the show notes. Thank you so much for being here. And I, I heard something. Um, I believe it was you, Dr. Glenn, who said, we've been together for 45 years. 
okay, did you get married mm-hmm. when you were seven? I mean, whatever. <laughs> In utero. Yeah, I married her. She was Where in are six wow. Yeah, well, Looking good, you two. <laughs> you guys look great. You're saving some good chi with all this emotional yeah, intelligence. Yeah. I love um, it. So true. Yeah. So true. And I do want to mention, because I love that, Leah, that you just mentioned the masterclass, that we actually have a coupon code for your listeners. If they put in SRI20, they'll get 20% off of any of the masterclasses. And that was SRI20. Great. Yeah. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Yeah. Such a pleasure to sit with you guys. We're going to have to have you back because it's so, so much we fun. Would love, yeah. We would love to. Actually, I was thinking about that uh, just a few minutes ago that to really dive into sexuality and yeah. how. I wanted to touch emotion- on that. I had a question, never but, came through. So, yes, yes. So, please okay. let us book another time we'll to really talk about that. Mm-hmm. To Because I think there for us, we went through so much trauma sexually Mm -hmm. and so much wounding and to see where we are today and the dynamic sexual relationship we have it's quite unbelievable but it's so hopeful and to know we're in our 60s -hmm. and we have the best sex of our lives now it's really we love that we want to share that with your audience yay okay until next time love 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 now our favorite part the dish just what an adorable couple and you know, the, um, the, what they've traversed, like what they've been through and 45 years of marriage. Now they're having the best intimacy, the best sex and, you know, sharing these deep emotional connections on a regular daily basis. You can really see that they walk their talk and, um, and that they have a big message that they want to give to the world. So it's really a blessing. I mean, a quarter century of distress how much time is a quarter century 25 years 25 years yeah i mean they've been together for almost 50 fucking years man i know that is that's like only our parents have that people don't do that these days do they yeah i guess my brother and his wife they got married in their 20s so they'll be doing that but right it's it's definitely more rare it's rare these days yeah for sure yeah um I just love their the simplicity that they've boiled their methodology down to. I think that that is, um, you yeah. Know. Everyone needs a Phyllis to like essentialize the shit out totally, of totally like system. dumb it down, make it easier. Yes, Let's simplify, I like, simplify. Oh, I struggle with that. I, I love know. adjectives. I love <laughs> describing all the things and all the ways you could understand it all around. Yeah, totally. And it's just too much. It's too much for people. They don't have the capacity, right? They don't have the yeah. time or I, the brain space for it. Yeah. I was like, oh, I'm the emotional one. Oh, I love all the details. Oh, I like all the geeky stuff. And I just love that Phyllis is the, yeah. um, is the processor essentializes the the system and executes? Yeah. I think yeah. it's a they're really yeah. cool match. Cute team, great yeah. team. Yeah, and I loved that 19 second understanding. I thought oh, that was that's super a great cool. nugget. I love really that. good to know. I'm constantly doing that work with people where I go into the into the emotions that are stored in their tissues, whether I'm doing vaginal work on a woman or like heart work on a man or something in between. You know, it's there's you go into it, and I I didn't know that about the 19 seconds. So that's gonna definitely color the way that I work with clients in a in a new light. Yeah. And just like in relating with friends and and partners, it's like, just be with them and let, and it'll move if you don't get in the way. Yeah. It's very Wu Wei. It's very Taoist, actually. It's very like non doing. Like, don't do, don't go, just be. Just be present or or just hold still or just, you know what I mean? Because you kind of have this, there's something about the time frame that increases the body's capacity. To go, oh, I can sit still. I can be there. And I, I don't mean sit still as in, you know, when they said the face yeah, is yeah. still. And, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. I'm saying just like you're not interrupting. Right. You're not jumping in. You're right. giving them only 20 seconds to just feel their feelings. And if you yeah. don't get in the way, the yeah. feelings will move. They will shift. Yeah. Genius. Because, again, that's all those emotions are like little people inside of us. And like all these little people inside of each one person wants to be seen, wants to be witnessed. And to be honest, you can do this for yourself. You really can. I mean, I do it all the time. You can do yeah. it with a journal or you can do it in meditation. You can do it on a walk. You can do it while you're swimming or doing Qigong or whatever you do. You know, yeah. you can actually do this for yourself. and. 
acknowledge like, okay, there's this sad part of me, you know, let me sit with it and actually feel it and ask it, what does it need? You know, there's this angry part of me. Let me just sit with it, feel it, ask it, what does it need? Or just what, what happens when, yeah, what happens. when, when I feel sad, what's happening and like getting yes. to know yourself. And I really liked that Phyllis was bringing this piece around you, you have to know yourself. Like this is a piece of inquiry, like being That's able essential. to know your own, these eight different regions of your brain when you feel sad, lonely, shame, joy, pain, yeah. all these things. Like what happens to you? Do you have an answer for that? And if you yeah. don't, sit with yourself and find out. Yeah, absolutely. So great. So check out their um, free offerings because you want to learn more about these two and all of the, what they're putting out into the world. And, you know, uh, I will say before we close, um, so I've just got done today with finishing the um, our triggers to intimacy where we talk about the pattern. Yes. And uh, episode 50, for those of you who want to go check it out. And it was it was cool to listen to Phyllis describe herself because her pattern types are really coming to the surface. Uh -huh. Right. And so like yeah. the classic rigid pattern time is one that sort of, you know, avoids those emotions, doesn't right. know what they're feeling. And to hear them both talk about her, about being like, you know, she's the one, she's a taskmaster. She gets yeah. shit done. Non emotional. She order, 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 order. Yeah. yeah. And those are, I mean, that is such the light side of rigid. And mm -hmm. then also sort of the wounded side of rigid, which is not thinking that they can't connect to their emotions as well. Right. Or judging emotions the where they want to deflect and not feel right. them. And I thought it was really cool to sort of watch that, that type that strategy show uh -huh. itself you know give us a, a really clear description for this episode so if yeah. you're curious about that go go check out episode 50 yeah absolutely all right y'all have a super yummy sexy day thanks for tuning in leah piper is a tantric sex master coach and a positive psychology facilitator dr willow brown is both a chinese and functional medicine doctor and a taoist sexology teacher don't forget your comments, likes, subscribes, and suggestions matter. Let's realize this new world together.